Rescue Inc. in Long Beach today. That's Inc. as I-N-K, not I-N-C. As you can see by looking at the outside of their building, this is not your typical animal shelter. When you visit their website at rescueinc.com, you'll see a group of guys who may look a little scary on the outside, but on the inside, they all have a soft spot for animals. Johnny O, one of the founders of Rescue Inc. Thanks, thanks for talking with me. Nice You're to meet quite you. welcome. Thanks for having me on the show. Rescue Inc. is a no-kill shelter that provides a safe haven for animals. They are a not-for-profit yeah, organization that relies on donations, fundraisers, and volunteers to help take care of, of abused, injured, and unwanted animals. Where did you meet your co-founders? Well, we kind of uh, grew up in the same area in Queens. And uh, we were the type of guys that if you had a problem, you came to us and we would take care of it. And we all had that one single bond, which was animals. So from that, we realized that, you know, if we were more together as a, as a group, we'd get more accomplished. And that's where rescuing came from. How many original members are working here today? There's three original founders, Joe Payne's, Big Ant, and myself. Where does your passion for helping animals come from? Well, about... I guess I was about 10 years old when I did my first rescue. And it was a squirrel in a tree that fell out, a baby squirrel. And my mom is from upstate country, and uh, she taught us about animals, how important they were. And we rehabbed the, uh, the squirrel, and then we let it run free when it got healthy, because it lost its mom. So you can say I was 10 years old when that, that all started with me. How did you come up with the name Rescue Ink? Well, you can see I have a lot of ink, and I love my ink. And we do rescue, so it kind of fits. Yeah, it does kind of fit. <laughs> yeah. How many volunteers do you have? Oh, gosh. We have many volunteers. They all work different areas of, of the shelter. Uh, some, you know, some volunteers, they all have, you know, professional jobs. So they help us with their professional side as well as taking care of the animals, like dog walking, uh, socialization, uh, cleaning, you know, with the cats. Um, you know, making sure that they're they're okay and and, uh, and socializing them in the cat room. We have a ca uh, cage-free cat room, so the cats aren't in cages. How old do you have to be to be a volunteer? Well, we like them to be 18 years old, but if they're under 18, they have to be uh, guided with a parent at all times. How many animals can your facility accommodate? Well, it depends on what kind. Um, for dogs, I would think about I'm guessing maybe 40, comfortably, and for cats, I would like to say maybe 30. What is the largest animal you've rescued? Oh boy, um, largest animal I've rescued or we've rescued is probably did a farm, and it was a 500 pound mother pig. Wow. And it chased me a couple of times, <laughs> but we got her. What's the smallest animal? Uh, we've had two birds here. We have a bearded dragon right above, looking right straight ahead at you. And uh, I would say that'd be the smallest animals that we've rescued. On your home page, which is on the computer right now, it says sometimes the road to redemption isn't always a peaceful one. Sometimes the tough guys are the only ones you can count on. What does that mean? A road to redemption means that we're all about second chances. And we've all had a little rough life, you know, growing up. And we've gotten second chances. And sometimes it's, you know, it's not always peaceful getting to, to where you want to go. So we always try to give everybody a second chance. So we kind of phrase it that way so because everybody deserves a second, even a third chance. And that's the animals included. What are puppy mills? Puppy mills are uh, people who continuously breed dogs and there's also cat mills too and they just they have the mother always pregnant and never comes out of a cage and just continuously breeds them and breeds them and breeds them they don't even know how to touch the ground because it's all chicken wire underneath and they call them puppy mills and there's no really strict law which we're trying to pass up puppy mill laws throughout the country and they sell them to pet stores and they sell them to uh, you know private you know individuals and they may be on a website and it says that they're, they're breeders, but they're really just puppy mills. And for every one dog you buy at a pet store, five to ten dogs die for that one dog. Wow. Yeah. 
Yes, and they sell them to the pet stores for very little money, but they sell them to the public for a lot of money. And what they can't sell, they destroy. How do you find animals that need rescuing? Well, you go to our website, you send in emails. We get continuously get emails on abuse cases. And, uh, and we investigate with the investigators that we have that work with us, uh, which are uh, uh, private investigators, former police officers, present police officers, and, uh, and we investigate very thoroughly. And we get so many, you know, we get the phone rings, as you see the phone was ringing before, so they call the shelter as well. So pretty much it's, uh, it's just uh, keeping your eyes and ears open when they see something, they send it to us. Do you find homes for them only in the Long Beach area? No, actually, I have all my animals here. I think I've only adopted out maybe three or four in Long Beach. The rest of them have all been outside of the Long Beach area. How do you make sure the animals are going to a good home? We do home checks. There's a process. First, you fill out a form that gives me a little background check on yourself and see if you had any, if you owned any animals in the past. Uh, how often you're home? You know, is somebody home? What kind of family? We do a little background check on the individual, and then we do we set up a home check. We want to make sure the home is a safe home for the animal, and that you know it's cared for properly. And if that passes, then we do the adoption contract, and then it's just uh, you know a little small adoption fee because we are a non for profit, like you said. And then the animal's in a forever home. What does the fee cover? The fee covers all their shots, and uh, they, uh, I make sure that they're uh, spayed and neutered, so they're ready to go. Have you ever had an adopt a free pet day? Well, we've had you know adoption events here and events for adoption, but we always ask for a donation because we you know for us of course a lot of the money comes out of our own pocket. So to do a free adoption is kind of hard, but we just what we do is we offer a, a, a donation, so we we'll let you call the price. Your organization has lots of programs to educate children about respecting animals bullying and keeping kids out of games. Can you tell me about those programs? Yeah, well, you know, we know there's a big problem with bullying in the schools now, and it has been for a long time, and we've been uh, speaking about that for a lot of years. And uh, we have a junior uh, volunteer pet detective program, so when we go to schools all over the country, as well as in your local area, we, we talk about bullying and how, how it all starts with the bullying. It's like abusing an animal. You know, everything starts with about abusing an animal. And to us, that's about power. It's about being, you know, thinking that you're tough, but you're not. So we try to educate that bullying doesn't always solve the situation, and it's wrong to do that because it's just like abusing an animal. If you stop abusing an animal, it's going to turn on you. So you have to make sure that the kids know that bullying is not, is, is, is very, it's very, um, disturbing. It's also teaching them what's right from wrong and, and we try to educate them by, you know, through the animal program where animals have feelings. You know, you want to be a voice for the animal. So sometimes you get one of those uh, kids that are a bully realizing that it's cooler to be, you know, helping an animal rather than to bully a little boy or a girl. So we educate them how it's not good to do that because of the fact of the consequences that can happen with it. Tell me about your TV show. When and where can people see it? Right now, uh, our TV show was on National Geographic Channel in 161 countries. It's presently being aired uh, throughout the, the, the world except for here in the United States. And it's on Netflix and Hulu.com. So you can watch it on, either the, on the websites as well. But we're in the process of changing over to a different network and soon you'll be seeing a new show. What was it like to be on Dr. Phil and Ellen? Wow. Uh, well, Ellen's a big fan of ours. We were on her show before we even had a TV show, and then after we had a TV show. She's a regular person like you and I. Uh, what you see is what you get. Uh, doesn't change. She's a big, big animal lover, and she will do almost anything for animals. Uh, she likes us a lot. She supports us. Uh, she donates her food, which is Halo Foods, to us. Um, so she's a she's a good supporter, uh, great woman. Dr. Phil is a, is a big animal. You know, all his dogs are all adopted from the shelters. Um, he really wanted to focus on dog fighting, and because uh, he knows that it all starts with abuse of the dog and it escalates to much worse in humans and children. And uh, so he wanted us on there, and uh, he actually asked he asked us not to hurt that guy on, on Dr. Phil. 
He said, do me a favor, don't hurt him, because it doesn't make it right. And we weren't going to hurt him. We were just going to scare him a little bit, which we did. So it was okay. How? Uh, sometimes putting the fear in somebody's eyes and seeing nine big guys on stage with you kind of might, might put a little fear in you. I'm one of the smaller guys in the group, so. Did you dance with Ellen? Because sometimes the Ellen dances with Yeah, they asked us to dance. I was going to, but I didn't. No, no. Maybe next time. Tell me about Rebel, your official mascot. Rebel was a, uh, from Kentucky. He was a bait dog. You know what a bait dog is? Yeah. A bait dog is when they're doing dog fighting, they need a dog to practice with. And a dog that's submissive, doesn't, it's not a fighter, doesn't, you know, show any aggression. And what they do is they take that dog and they, they wrap his mouth up with wire and they tie his hands and they throw him into the dog pit to practice with. That was Rebel. His real name was Ribbon. And unfortunately, and fortunately for him, he got out. He escaped and somebody found him in their, in their, I think it was their garage, eating their dog's food. So he was one of the lucky ones who got away. They contacted us. We flew down there. We grabbed him and we brought him back. Um, they named them Ribbons because all his ears were all shredded like ribbons. So we changed it to Rebel because pretty much we're Rebels. So we felt he was a Rebel and he made a 120% you know, makeover and uh, he did a 360 and he's uh, came our mascot and he's a great dog. And it shows you that um, as much as abuse that he's gotten, he still forgave. And, and he's a very lovable dog. Do you rescue animals all over the country? Yes. We've done rescued animals as far as Israel, um, Texas and states here, Florida, uh, California. Um, we even had one in uh, Turkey. Wow. Yeah. That's, wow. It's like all over the world. All over the world. But we network with a lot of different rescue groups that we trust and, and we get a lot of the information for them. You just had a Casino Royale fundraiser. Mm -hmm. What other fundraising events do you have coming up? Uh, boy, uh, for us, we, uh, we have um, a couple of the events here, right here in Long Beach. We have the boardwalk events, the, the craft fair, and then the Long Beach Historical Society. So we'll be up there on the boardwalk. Um, we have a, uh, we're going to a fundraiser in New Jersey. Uh, it's the Drift, uh, uh, Formula Drift Speedway for racing cars. And we're one of the uh, major sponsors there, so we're going to be there as well. And that's coming up in about uh, two weeks. So we have a couple of things coming up. Wow. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fast cars. I visited, I visited your website at rescueinc.com, which again is shit on the computer, and watched the, and watched the video about the designing and making of the Rescue Inc. there. That was actually pretty cool. Oh, the ambulance. Yeah, that was very cool. That ambulance needed an ambulance. It was an old ambulance that somebody gave us. And you saw a big ant on there, the big guy, the big guy up there, and he was working on that with uh, one of the other guys, yeah. Well, that, that was a, a human ambulance, and we converted it into a pet ambulance. So what we did is that anybody who needed help vetting their animals, we would pull up in the ambulance with a, with a vet tech or a vet who would volunteer their services, and we would help them take care of their animals, you know, for the basic needs. And um, and it was you know as you see how it has all the flames on it like the flames on it yeah yeah all the flames and the, the, all the, the chain link fencing I see and uh, so it was kind of an eyesore people knew we were coming but it was a good thing because we helped a lot of animals in that in that ambulance. What other kinds of things can people see on your website? Uh, we have a shop that sells uh, merchandise. Um, we put up all, all our, our success stories. We we we, can't, we, we update on the uh, animals that we've helped out. Um, about us, it tells us about it, uh, each one of us a little a little about us, and uh, you know we just have friends that help us out, volunteers. Uh, the donate button is always important. Adopting the pets, if you hit adopt, it'll show all the animals that are available. Our biggest goal is to find forever homes for our animals, and we, like you said, we're a no kill shelter, so. They're not going anywhere until we get them home. If someone sees an animal in danger or is injured, how could they contact you? Well, they, here in Long Beach, they would contact the police department and they would contact their animal control officers and they would get radioed in and then the animal control officers would, would pick up the local animal here and then bring it to our shelter here. 
Can we visit some of the animals that are here? Absolutely. Absolutely. I really like your motto, abusers are losers, because it's actually true. Thanks for allowing me to visit your shelter here. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Uh, Sammy? It's pretty hard to remember when they're uh, doing you, you it. You get used to it. This is Sammy, very cats. social. This is Piglet, who's a big cat. Yeah, he's a good boy. Yeah. And this one over here, this is Lulu. Lulu likes Jack the camera, huh? Jack and all the huh? cats do much of them. Yeah. This, that's this is Lulu right here. This one, we got two, over here. We got then we got uh, three, four, this is five, um, six, uh, seven, Twitch. Twitch eight. is very happy. This is Twitch. They came together, these two. Then we got Mr. Wiggles right here. And then we have Honolulu Bob over here. Hey, Bob. Whoa. I know, Lulu. There you go. We got Peg there, who has three legs up on top. That's what we call a peg. Yeah, we got Cupcake over here, who's going to be adopted on Friday. All right, Cupcake? Yep. The person who adopted her sibling is taking her now. Yeah, we got, uh, that's Tigger, the other one. These two came together. Well, baby, I know. These two came together. We want. What? what? Yes, I know. Wake up. And the great thing about the cats is that they, uh, they're they very lovable, but their uh, being cage free becomes very social. So when we adopt them out, it's a much easier tra transition. And we've adopted many cats already. So. And having a lot of trees helps too. So you know, far, I've counted 11 too. cats. Yeah, we have about 22 all together. <laughs> This one here is Johnny Jet. These two play together. All right, John, come here, Bubba. We got this one here. We just got a couple of days ago. This one was walking in the streets. This is a Dotson, Bass, and Hat Mix. And we got Bosco. Who's the last of a pepper litter that we had? That's, a, that's his mother right here. This is Faze, this is Bosco. Yeah, we have families interested in these dogs. We're doing, we're doing, a, we're doing home checks right now, you were asking. Here we got Slim. No, this is, this is, uh, this is uh, Maximus. Maximus, Max. Uh, Slim over here. Slim's a good boy. Loves to be pet underneath. Question, how come the exact moment they saw me, they all started barking? They want the, 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 they want the attention. Then we have uh, Joel Buford over here. Well, I... Hey, Buford. Come here, buddy. Hey, Buford, over here. Come. Hey, buddy. I, got, I have a really good home for him lined up, hopefully. You're talking about where I adopt them out. He might be going to Massachusetts, in Boston, former military uh, investigator. He's in love with him, and he wants him really bad. He's a, he's a four year old and nine year old uh, kids, so that'd be a great home for him. He loves German Shepherds, that's his breed. So we'll find out. I have some friends up there doing a home check, and as soon as that passes, I'm going I'm I'm to get in the truck. Well, let me finish, let me finish what I'm saying. As soon as I'm finished with uh, the home check, I'm going to put him in a truck and bring him to Boston, and he's going to be a forever home. So a lot of them don't really get adopted out here in Long Beach. It's more outside of Long Beach. But everybody wants a rescue an animal because the way we take care of them, how we treat them, how we socialize them. We have a beautiful dog park back here as well where they play and they get trained by our trainers. So they get a lot of, a lot of socialization, which is probably more than an average home. So that's, that's a good thing. Okay, so the question is, how come some dogs have a mix of some breeds? That's what the people do, or you know, they, they try try different breeds to mix them to try and make them a different type of dog. Or they just you know they just get get lost and they you know that's what we we call that breed the mutts. It's a mix of a little of everything. They call mutts. But um, he's not. He's a purebred German Shepherd. And then I have a I have a can of torso back there. That's that's a zoo, uh, that's Lupo. I just got him a few days ago. He's a kind, gentle, you know, gentle giant. We should say he's a great dog. If you are interested in.
and adopting a pet or know of an animal that needs help, contact Rescue Inc. You can find information on their website at rescueinc.com or visit our Facebook page. I'm Carson Libby and this is you.